In today's video, we're going to be checking out my U11 basketball team and some of the things that they did in their game to win by 20 points. This was a fantastic game. They played extremely well, so let's get down. Let's check them out so that your team can win by a ton as well. Okay, so first what we're looking at is a lot of passing. They passed around the perimeter, they got it into the post to collapse the defense, they kicked it out, they swung it back around to move that defense. We were running up against a zone, teams are not really supposed to be running a zone at this age anyways, and obviously we'll rewind this just a bit, and we'll, I'll kind of break down what we're seeing. So the, the other team was running what looked to be a 2-3 zone, and while... At this age, they say not to run a zone. There is no real rule against it. It's just kind of... Uh, uh, the Ontario basketball says that you should be running man-to-man. -man, and most people really don't. I do, however. But uh, from there, what we see is they were running a 2-3 zone. There's a lot of players here who are out of position on their defense. They're kind of just trying to, I guess, swarm whoever has the ball. Uh, and then we were able to get it into the post... They were able to double team that post. We got that ball back out to the perimeter. We were then able to swing that ball out after getting double teamed once again. And then he was, I can't say any of the players' names because of uh, their ages, but uh, we were able to swing that ball back around to the opposite side. We can see how the defense is now way, way, way out of position. And we were able to then get that ball back into the post where we did miss this shot, but either way, we were able to beat that zone quite well, uh, mainly because we just kept on passing the ball. If you pass the ball, especially against younger age groups, uh, what you're going to be mostly seeing is that zone just way just moving all around where that ball is going, and eventually you're going to have yourself an open shot. Now here what we're looking at is, uh, it's really hard to see uh, kind of where the camera is it was it was recorded vertically however uh, we play a man-to-man -man defense 99% uh, of the time and uh, here we are playing man-to-man -man. they were trying to pass that ball around but uh, I've, I've kind of taught my players how to, uh, through shell drills and stuff to be able to guard their man super close uh, when they're one pass away and for teams that are trying to pass that ball around uh, we are generally going to be intercepting their passes. That's what was able to happen here. And uh, my starting center was able to then get a wide open layup all the way down the court. Now in this next clip, once again, we are passing that ball around and we were able to find an open three point shot and we were able to make it. So basically what we had was my, my starting center was bringing the ball up the court. I may call him a center, but I play positionless basketball. Everyone can be a center. Everyone can be a point guard. And from there, he was able to pass that ball and cut to the basket. And then at this point, we were able to pass that ball around the perimeter. As we can see, there was multiple players trying to trap or double team up top. And by just passing that ball around the perimeter, we can see that uh, multiple players right here were not in position to be able to guard this. And of course, uh, our player was able to get a three point shot. Now, something that you can see right here, I hope that I can remember to blow this up just a bit. But uh, one of the things that I've taught every single one of my players is what we see right here. And that is the other team. Uh, well, we, we can put this through. We can see it goes to a jump ball. Um, basically, the other team, if they bring the ball down to their waist, the first thing that you should do, or at least as a defensive player, is to try to rip that ball from them. Uh, if a player brings the ball down to their waist, it is no longer protected. Most referees will think that you're also out of control, and referees generally don't see fouls there either. So by bringing, if the other team brings the ball down to their waist, I always tell my players to try to rip it from them, either get a jump ball or steal the ball one or the other and that's exactly what we were able to do here we were able to get a jump ball which slowed down their transition and of course we were uh, eventually able to win this game so in this next clip what we have is a uh, another point to point pass and then a cut to the basket we then swung it from uh, essentially one side of the point close to the wing to the other uh, we can we were able to do this mainly because they were the whole defense it was a zone defense and they were uh, trying to stack uh, that one side and so kind of were we with that pass and cut 
And so we were able to swing it back around. And then because they were mostly, the other team was mostly just following that ball around. And that's why I preferred to run a man-to-man defense with younger players and not a zone. Is because in a zone, they tend to just follow the ball. And in man-to-man, they understand that there is a man that they have to guard. And they don't leave guys open, as we see here. And that gave us an easy basket. And here's my center once again being a point guard. I always like to try to get every single player being able to dribble that ball. And because we never know how tall they're going to be in the future. I was six feet tall in grade six and uh, I ended up stopped growing at six foot two. So uh, when it comes down to it, anyone and everybody should learn how to be a point guard, a center, a forward and everything else. But uh, anyways... Our center was bringing the ball up the court. He was able to pass to uh, who I would call my point guard in, uh, on this shift. And uh, he was able to then shoot that three and make it. And how this was able to happen is basically my center was able to collapse two players on him at once. Uh, again, anytime that happens, you should be teaching your guys to pass. And that's what we were able to do here. And then, of course, we were able to hit that three-point shot. Fantastic shot. And, of course, a great strategy, again, is just to pass. And on defense, to run man-to-man, not a zone. Uh, zone leaves too many people open if, of course, uh, you have a team that passes like ours. Now, I just wanted to really show this clip. Now, we got double teamed, almost triple teamed in that corner. We were able to get that ball out. And I just really wanted to show this player's move. This spin move was absolutely fantastic. Now, yes, while he could have passed to a few different players, he literally had four out of the five other team's players around him trying to take that ball. Um, he still was able to score. And I really wanted to show this off because that was just such a great move. Fantastic spin move. And there's the score. Uh, I think that was halftime, uh, 22 to 12. And then in this next clip, we have uh, who I would classify as my point guard on this shift, uh, passing over to my center. He was able to then cut to the point to an open spot. And then uh, he was able to get that pass back. He was wide open. As we can see, like this defense, they were running a zone, obviously. And they were just basically following the ball. They were not really following uh, a man or understanding uh, that they're leaving their zones. And we were able to find open spots on the court because of that. And my team is a very good, well-shooting, three-point shooting team. And uh, we were able to make them pay by winning by 20. We could have maybe won by a bit more if I uh, had more guys who were not sick. Uh, but this was a fantastic game. Great passing game. Overall, fantastic. Now, here we have a point to wing pass. And then a quick pass right into the post to a player who was open, who was in position to get a layup. Again, trying to look for the best possible shot teaching your team to be able to move that ball around and if you've got an open shot to take it or if you see somebody with a better shot than yourself then to pass them the ball so that they can get the uh the points for the team now this is another great passing uh play right here we had a point to wing pass and again wing to post here we did miss the shot we were able to get that rebound which is fine, we were able to get that basket, but uh, there's a few things here that I really wanted to point out, and that is, you can't really see it off camera, but we had the corner cut to the rim, because if there's an open lane, always wanna try and find an open spot, Whether we're even though we're playing a five out offense, if there's an open spot and you don't see a player who's guarding you, you need to get to that spot and call for the ball. That's what happens here, and we were able to get that layup. Now, we did miss, but the next part right here is, again, something that I really like players doing. And I don't think I've actually explained this to my team just as of yet. But right here, he keeps that ball high above his head, and then he's able to make that layup. By keeping that ball high, it's stopping all the shorter players from trying to hack away at it. And by bringing it down low, referees generally don't see the fouls call or the fouls happening. And they classify you, or at least in most cases, having the ball down, and you're out of control. So by keeping it high, you're allowing the referees to see the players hacking away. And they're unable to hack away when you're the height of, of course, that player. 
Anyways, that's the end of today's video. I hope that this video has helped you and your team win more games. If it has, hit that like button, subscribe. Make sure to go check out my Unbeatable Basketball Zone Defense book down in the description below. And also my 5-Out Complete Guide down there as well.